Good day, everyone. I was born and raised in Detroit. Growing up there, I saw people like me running things. This is a courtroom, not a circus, so we're gonna calm down. I'm sorry. What I found there was a passion that I didn't know existed. This is the bottom line. I'm excited to free fall into the limitless possibilities with we the people. So many are fearful of the law. They think it's something that works against them. I think you need to begin to accept responsibility for your mistakes. We are the people. Gloria Coleman claims the braids a new hairstylist gave her were so tight that it caused her to lose her hair. Quinesha Locke says she recommended a different style, but Ms. Coleman wouldn't change her mind. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lauren Lake presiding. You may be seated. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Sean. Good day, everyone. Good day. This is the case of Coleman versus Locke. Ms. Coleman, you're suing Ms. Locke for $300 due to hair loss you say she caused uh, because she made your braids too tight. Yes, Your Explain Honor. Explain to the court what happened. Well, my granddaughter had gotten her hair done previously by Miss Locke. Okay. So she was recommended to me. I was going to a church event and I wanted to get my braids. So she contacted her, she didn't reply. So she contacted her again and she gave me an appointment to come into her for salon. So I go into her salon to get my hair done. I was a little bit late, maybe about six minutes or so late. When I, when I arrived, she wasn't ready to do my hair at that time. So I had to sit there for maybe 30 minutes or so. When I got into the seat, she proceeded to start on my hair, and I said, oh, well, aren't you gonna wash it? And she said, no, you're late. But then she turned around. Now, mind you, I paid her $300 for services. So then she decided to go ahead and wash my hair. She started braiding my hair, and That's she started braiding my hair too tight. One second, Ms. Locke. I said, you're braiding my hair too tight. The further forward she got into my hair, it was getting tighter and tighter. And I told her, you're braiding my hair too tight. So but hold she on. continued. Pause, pause there. Ms. Locke, I want you yes. to respond. Yes. So she came to get the hair braided. Yes. Got in the chair. Mm -hmm. You started braiding. I, well, first, I was kind of a little bit arguing with her because she took too long. If you've ever been to a hair salon, you know that you work on multiple heads at once. Okay? Not braids. Well, not braids, no. You're gonna braid her hair all at once, but I was finishing up another client before right. she had got there. Right. That's how the hair salons work. So I'm doing her hair before we even got started, Your Honor. I'm noticing she ain't got that many edges right there. So I let her know, you know, hey, let's do a different hairstyle possibly because it's gonna be very strenuous on your hair. She proceeded to tell me that this is what she wanted to do. She wanted the braids. I even texted her granddaughter. Her granddaughter said, just do what my grandma wants. Okay, so then I'm braiding your hair. I am noticing as I'm braiding her hair, she's like, ah, and all this and all that. So I'm like, um, are you tender headed? She says, yeah, I'm a little tender headed. So that's normal. That's normal know. when you're tender headed, it's going to hurt, period. Like it's So you hurt. weren't too concerned about the oohs and the ahs because that's just normal that's getting just your hair normal braided. behavior when you're tender headed. When you're tender headed. I know my son yes. used to be tender headed. Okay. He could not get so his know. hair combed without screaming. So I get that. Now, Ms. Coleman, you say, she kept braiding and braiding, and you kept noticing it was painful. Did you ever say, I would like to get a different style? No. Nope. Because I don't know if this is gonna work for me. No, braids... I've had my hair braided in individual braids before, and I've never, ever had that type of feeling. When's the last time you had individual braids? Before this time? Probably, maybe I'd say six months prior. Oh, all right. And this was a special occasion I was going to. All so right. I wanted it so done. So do you remember Ms. Locke asking you, do you want to try a different style? She suggested it. And then what did you say? No, I wanted that style. All right. Because it was easier for me to manage. And being the professional that she claimed to be. I am a be, professional. Everybody come get their hair done She should me. have known the texture of my hair and how to manage it in the braids. And if she supposedly said that I didn't have that many edges, why, I want to know from her, why were you pulling the few edges that I had? Well, I'm going to let you answer, Ms. Locke, but I have an idea about that. 
I just pretty much told her, I said, we could swoop and dupe. But you see how I got these little swoops right here? But why did you do that? I was trying to hook her up you and do a swoop and because you didn't you want that. It. You, you didn't it. want the swoops. You pulled, you pulled You told it. me you wanted your hair you braided. It. Well, what do you do when you did get you your hair braided? Did you tell her you didn't want the swoops, Miss Coleman? I don't recall telling her no. I don't even recall her asking me that. She just kept on doing my hair and told me that, oh, it's going to be okay after I finish. All you got to do is put a little oil and take a few aspirins and it will stop hurting sure. in a day or so. And I was like, okay. So I'm trusting her. She's the professional. Coming up. But she wanted it. She but paid that money for you that how stuff. It was when I went in there. Miss Coleman, you got a lot of evidence now. Can you bring this all this evidence that you got? She, you can and see make sure you let her Just know give how me everything you got. And later, stating that he wanted me to have half of his savings and his bonds. Is that true, Mr. Uh, Goldberg? Uh, Your Honor, it, it's uh, true but misleading. Closed captioning provided by. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. We're back with the case of Gloria Coleman and Quinesha Locke, who are arguing over a hair loss inducing trip to the salon. So what happens to your hair after you get it braided? So what, what, when do you start seeing damage? Well, it was immediately. It was hurting when I left her shop. Okay, well, that's not abnormal. I mean, if you go get individual braids, they hurt. I've gotten them before. So, so that's not abnormal. It's also not abnormal to have to take a couple aspirin. Well, I've um, never had any fallout before. I understand that. That's why I'm trying to hear from your testimony what you think Ms. Locke did wrong. Because braiding individual braids tight, in my experience, is a necessity. You have to do a it. Anybody in the gallery ever got braids? Yes. Did they have to do them tight if there's individuals? Yeah, they they have to be. Well, this so when one was she a asked excessive. You, the okay, so you felt like she went above and beyond like, because of the fact that if I had like a thinning of hair, maybe prior to before, it may have been different. She has a heavier hand and she braided it heavy because the second day I was still having that same pain. I still had to get uh, aspirin, and then the third day, I couldn't take it anymore. So I asked my granddaughter to take them out because we tried to contact her and she was unavailable to assist me in taking them out. I couldn't take them out myself. I don't have the strength for that. And she was not able to do it, so my granddaughter took them out. And when she took them out, my scalp was irritated. It had been inflamed and I was like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? My edges had bumps. So it was so bad, for three days it, it bothered me, I had to go to urgent care. So when I went to urgent care, the doctor, he had never seen anything like it before. He said, this is just was from so braids. Irritated. He said, from braids, this, is, it's, this has caused you to have traction alopecia. I was like, hmm, never heard of it. I have. And I, I understand how braids that are very, very, very tight can cause that. This is this court's dilemma. Ms. Locke testified, and you agreed, that as she braided and saw your hair... Multiple times, too, Your But Honor. I do yeah. have a doctor's note, uh, I'd like Your to Honor, see it. I'd like stating to see it. that she had done my hair too tight and why I developed the traction, uh, alopecia. This does not say that Ms. Locke braided your hair too tight. What it says is, is that it happens from your hair being worn up and pulled tight, right? And then the treatment for it is wear your hair out of braids and not pulled back. I understand that you came and wanted a hairstyle that you saw someone else have or that you want it to have. I do believe that Ms. Locke did her due diligence by suggesting another hair style once she started to braid your hair. And I can see from here that you are not in the position to be getting individual braids around your hairline. We then have to figure out, did Ms. Locke do something wrong? Now, there's a part of me that says, Ms. Locke, you maybe should have just refused. I see, I was gonna yeah. do that, but I'm trying to get my money, make my money, and I'm a professional. Well, listen, but I, I, I get that, but I'm saying all money, right, ain't good money when you end up in court over it, when your first Girl. mind told you, that I do don't think else. this is the style for her. 
But she wanted it. She but paid I that money for that it stuff. Was when I went in there, Miss Coleman, you got a lot of evidence now. Can you bring this all this evidence that you got? She, you can and see make sure you let her Just know give how me everything you got. Your your give me was. everything you got before she started. Let, I hope you read it when she said her granddaughter is very professional. This is what your hairline was before she started. Yes. You definitely shouldn't have got no individual. Thank you. That's why I told her you're the professional. You should know how to braid it. Or you should tell me how to braid it. No, 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 no. What she tried to tell you was. You do need to get a different style. You just didn't want to hear that. Now, let me see these messages. Hey, my braids are too tight. Can you help me? Um, I'm booked. I can do it in a week. Can I get a refund for my $300 at least since I paid all this money? I did six hours of work. I can't wait that long. You got... Pr I can tell you right now from your hairline, that is going to be a problem. And she told you that. And I can see the money that you paid her. Listen, I'm not going to waste everybody's time because at the end of the day... It is what it is. You paid for a service she provided. She also gave you a, her professional opinion that you should change the style that you're having, to which you then demanded you give the braids that you wanted. You get the braids that you wanted. There is no way this court can hold Ms. Locke liable for the damages because that is unfortunately a lesson that you have to learn that when a hair professional says to you that you should not get this, right? You have to accept your role and responsibility in demanding what you want and how you want it, and it, if in the end it pulls your hair out. I know it is tough, but Ms. Locke did the right thing by telling you you should have gotten another style. Judgment for the defendant. Court is adjourned. All right. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's case is dismissed. No, why would you braid what I had? I don't want to hear you, That's you, why you, you, you're, you're, I'm going to make sure you that win. you don't get the I coins won. that you want to get. You sit here wasting my time. I could have had $800 today, girl. You're not today, girl. professional. But I'm sitting you're here not dealing with you, Grandma. That's come professional on. people. You may now you exit do. the courtroom. Coming up. I started to reconnect with them, and he eventually wrote a will one month before he was diagnosed with dementia, stating that he wanted me to have half of his savings and his bonds. Closed captioning provided by. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. Jeremy Goldberg claims his brother is keeping an inheritance from their late father for himself. Christopher Goldberg claims the money was used to care for their father. Good day, everyone. Good day, Judge. This is the case of Goldberg versus Goldberg. Mr. Goldberg, you're suing your brother for $9,000, and you claim uh, you're half the savings bonds that his father put away, and you inherited when he passed. That is correct, Your Honor. So tell me what happened. I'm sorry about the passing of your father. Your Honor, basically, a year ago, I was found out that my father had dementia. You know, as a child, my father was an, he was an actor. He was also a drunk, and he abused me as a child. That's and not as true. he got older, I started to reconnect with them. And he eventually wrote a will one month before he was diagnosed with dementia, stating that he wanted me to have half of his savings and his bonds. Is that true, Mr. Uh, Goldberg? Uh, Your Honor, it, it's uh, true but misleading. My father did write that letter. However, his state of mind was unclear when he wrote that letter. My father lived with me for two years. I was his caregiver. What he thinks there was in the bonds and the savings is not true. We had to pay for a hospital bed. We had to have a special shower made with rails. We basically converted our home into a hospice for two years. There was a lot more out-of-pocket expenses that came out of my savings. So you were your father's primary caregiver? We were. What did your brother do? Ask him. I, I, I didn't even see him until the last year of my father's life. Coming up. And eventually my father had signed and signed the will stating that I should get half of the savings and bonds. Do you have a copy of that will? I do, Your Honor. Closed captioning provided by... You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. We're back with brothers Jeremy and Christopher Goldberg, who are in court fighting over an inheritance. What about day-to-day -day care? 
Were you participating in that, Mr. Goldberg? I was not. I mean, at the time, I had a full-time job, and I wasn't always able to be there. I tried to uh, <laughs> go on the weekends. You know, I was trying to mend the relationship that we had, and eventually, my father had signed and signed the will stating that I should get half of the savings and bonds. Do you have a copy of that will? I do, Your Honor. It's not a will, Your Honor. It's just a letter my father wrote. This is not a will. Why did you just offer this up as a will? I mean, to me, it states clearly what my father's intentions was for his savings and bonds. He wanted me to have Well, half. it's a letter. It says, Jeremy, I'm writing this to you because your brother Christopher and you are my greatest joys. I'm sorry I can't be here longer, but you and your brother are to split all of the remaining money left in my savings account. Just signed by your dad. This is lacking what's necessary to be a valid will. To my best of my knowledge, this is all that he had given to me. Did he have a will, Mr. Goldberg? He didn't have an actual will. All right. Do you I, have evidence about how much you spent caring for your father? I do, Your Honor. May I see that, please? Yes. This is actually just, just half of what I spent. Uh, oh, this is an invoice for your brother. Well, yes, my accountant drew that up. I don't have the actual receipts, but we did have to pay for... Uh, a hospital bed, which was about $8,000. Don't you have it on your credit summer. card? Uh, I don't have those documents with me today. Judge Lake's verdict when We the People returns. Promotional consideration provided by... You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. But this is from your accountant saying that the hospital bed, the new shower and the stalls and the housekeeping bills they all came to $9,000, which is the exact amount that your brother's suing you for. That, that's approximately half of what it cost me. So basically, this invoice was going to be given to your brother to show this is the half of the money he owes for the care of your father. Exactly. But you do not have any receipts that shows that you actually had to invest double this amount. Uh, I don't have those with me today, Your Honor. Why? A lot of that was disposed of after my father passed away. He, How long know, ago did your father pass away? It was about six months ago, Your Honor. Did you bring any evidence, Mr. Goldberg, of what you knew your father was supposed to have in the bank? The cost that your brother incurred taking care of your father. Do you have anything else but this little letter? I don't, Your Honor. I heard enough. I can't rule on something that you all not even ready for court. You didn't come in here with no paperwork. You didn't come in here with no receipts. You didn't come in here with no bank accounts. I think you all need to spend more time honoring your father by not fighting over money. For that reason, it's been determined by this court. Mr. Goldberg, your case is dismissed. Court is adjourned. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's case is dismissed. For what? You liquidated all of his assets and claim he has, you have no money? Do you no. think it's really worth it to sue me in court over such little bit of money? You're going to see you in court again, or am I going to see you at a family holiday? I still love you. Man. I may now exit the courtroom. This has been a production of Entertainment Studios.